Everything begins from your mindset. You see, the way you look at life completely reflects what you are going to achieve in it. If you wake up every morning and give life your all, if you put yourself out there and jump at opportunities, then eventually things will start to fall in place. Now, of course, it's easy to say this, and it's not always possible, as everybody has days when they can't implement this mindset. But if you try to implement it as much as possible on a day-to-day -day basis, then you will start to see huge changes. Everybody has the ability to change their mindset, even if you don't think that you do. Society plays a really big role in moulding our mindset. While we are taught many good things, we are also taught our limitations. These include where to sit, where to talk, what to do. Sometimes these restrictions can be helpful as they help us establish boundaries such as loyalty, respect and kindness. However, if you accept the boundaries that have been placed on your mindset, that's when you will struggle to grow and flourish. Growing up, I was just an average school kid. I worked hard, I was always interested in the world around me, and of course I had my goals and passions. I always wanted to own my own business, work in music, fashion, photography, there was no ends. I was a creative through and through. However, as we get older, we are not always taught to act on our passions. You see, I always wanted to achieve these things, but society tells you to see them as dreams. Something was out of reach and intangible. But it took me one life-changing experience for my mindset to change. For me to realise that I had limited time on this planet and that I needed to act on these passions. This shift in mindset happened about four years ago. I'm 16 years old, on holiday with my three best friends. We've saved up all year and it's an experience we are so excited about. We're staying in the town just around the corner from Nice. And on the third night, we decide to walk to the promenade. The 14th of July, 2016, Bastille Day, we go to watch the Bastille night fireworks. The seagulls are swooping overhead as darkness fell and the gentle sound of the waves fills the gaps between the much louder bangs of the fireworks. The firework display finishes, but we are only at the beginning of our night, so we start to wander down towards the music on the promenade. In what seems like a really split second, the flow of people ambling the other way soon becomes a flood. People are running, screaming, running the complete opposite direction, and nobody knows what is happening, and so we run too. The French police are marked by their hats, their guns, they rush towards the new noise that now sounds like gunfire. I've seen fa fathers protecting their children, shielding them, and we keep on running. We don't stop running. We run up a hill and hide in a stranger's house. The owner doesn't speak English, but he's extremely kind. We wanted to turn the light lights off in the house so we could hide, but we couldn't find the light switches, so we just unscrewed all of the light bulbs. We stayed there for about six hours with other people like us who had also found shelter in the stranger's home. After a few hours, it had become clear to us as to what happened. This was a terrorist attack. A man had driven down the promenade, which was packed shoulder to shoulder with people, swerving to hit as many of them as he possibly could. 86 people died on the promenade that day, and we were some of the lucky ones. Before we left this incredibly kind stranger's house, he got out his phone and showed us some pictures and videos that were soon to circulate around social media moments after the attack. It was a video of lifeless bodies sprawled along the promenade. Seeing that at age 16 is something that I can never unsee. When I got home that night, I couldn't sleep. I cried all night trying to process what had happened because you feel this severe sense of guilt for surviving and you see at 16, you think you know it all until something like this completely shakes your entire world to its core. At the time you feel helpless, you think, why did it happen to me? Why do I deserve to be alive and not them? You feel completely out of control. After I got back home to London, I had this realization. This realization that I wouldn't let this defy me, that I would come back stronger and I would live every day to the fullest because you don't know what's around that corner. Since then, the way I see, think and act has never been the same. During that exact moment of the attack, you become emotionally blind. It's fight or flight. All you can think is finding safety. But as soon as you 
relax. That moment after the attack, all those emotions you should have been thinking catch up with you. And that's the split second when my mindset changed. That's the moment when you realize how precious life is and that you need to act on those dreams and those passions that are always in the back of your head. You need to act now. My mindset completely changed. It brought a new sense of urgency into my life. I went from this teenager with dreams, these teenager with dreams that seemed so far away from reality that were out of reach to this teenager that now will do whatever he can to achieve those goals. I would not let anybody or anything stop me getting in the way of achieving what I wanted. I didn't think, I can't do that or that's something I'd like to do. It went to, I can do that and I'm going to give it a go. Something like this makes you realize how precious life is and that you actually don't have long to make an impact on this planet. I let this mindset manifest itself in three key ways. Number one, I realized that life is too short, that it's too precious to not be productive and not put yourself out there. Number two, I started to care about the small things in life and use them as stepping stones to get where I wanted to go. And number three, I surrounded myself with friends who had the same desired mindset, with people who like me thought the exact same way. And if you start to implement these three things on a daily basis, you will start to see huge changes. But for me, it really did start with those little things. The things I didn't do before, maybe things as small as making your bed every morning. Admiral William H. McRaven said something that really resonated with me. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride to go and do another task, another and another. All these actions, no matter how small they are, reflect the trajectory as which you are going. Once I started to manifest this mindset on a daily basis, a funny thing started to happen to me. Though I was only a few months older, people treated me differently and one opportunity led to another. Emails I may have sent months ago now got replies through this newfound tenacity and drive that was reflected in my emails. It ended up with me working with some of my favorite creatives and the dominoes really started to fall in place. I was the exact same person, but there was just a change in my mindset and everybody else treated me differently because of it. Of course, there was a lot of luck along the way, but the rejections and ignored emails didn't seem to bother me anymore. I began to work on my photography, videography, and creative directing. Within a few months, I had taken pictures of people like the 45th Vice President of the United States, Al Gore, award-winning actor Colin Firth, and TV presenter Holly Willoughby, and more recently, I've been working for a fashion magazine and I've been lucky enough to work alongside the legendary music video director, Daps the Director, Hendrix House, Design World. I even got to assist some of my favorite photographers, such as Zek Snaps and Philip Rahim. It took me one life-changing experience to realize this. It took me one life-changing experience to realize this and then go and get to those opportunities. However, there are numerous people that have had the same realization as me without having to go through what I went through. Everybody can have this enlightenment in their lives. And how do I know this? Because there's so many of us now. All you need to do is take a look at people like Ben Pasternak. Ben is a 20 year old entrepreneur from Australia. He created the app Monkey, which allows people to meet other like-minded individuals. Or Noga Levy Rappaport, an 18 year old leading the charge in the UK as a climate activist. And Akshay Rupelia, was the UK's youngest millionaire at the age of 18. Akshay launched his own online estate agency from his own home. These are some examples from Generation Z who are really leading the charge on applying this mindset. However, it's not limited to Generation Z. Anybody can apply this mindset and let it manifest. The reason I'm talking to you today is because of my experience of changing my mindset and I want that to have an impact on you. I have manifested this mindset since 2016 and my life has been completely different to what it could have been. I've had some absolutely amazing opportunities and they've all come from me saying, I'm going to give it a go and I'm going to see where these opportunities take me. It's that first step. The biggest mistake you can make is being afraid to make one. And one thing is for certain that in two, three, or maybe even four years from now, 
If you don't act on those passions and dreams, you are going to regret it. It's always easier to say you're going to do something than actually doing it. But if you don't, you will only regret it. You must make things work. Now, I don't mean to go and drop everything you are currently doing and focus on your passions. But you can't keep making excuses to yourself as to why you can't do and act on those dreams. Don't ever forget that there is a world outside of where you currently are and it's full of amazing people and amazing opportunities. Everything I'm talking about is backed by Carol Dweck's mind state theory. Dweck's theory is based on two mindsets, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. Someone with a fixed mindset might avoid challenges, might give up really easily. But somebody with a growth mindset will take on challenges. They'll embrace challenges, they'll persevere and they'll learn from them. Carol suggests that there's evidence that a growth mindset allows people to learn from experiences and push their boundaries. So they can improve and go beyond somebody that might have a fixed mindset. It's thought that only 2% of the population pursue their dreams with eagerness and enthusiasm. Only 2% choose to be happy by being fulfilled. The other 98%, of course, they want the same thing, but the fear of losing is far greater than the possibility of coming out on the other side a winner. As you can see, the world will treat you according to your mindset. Now, alongside that, we need the determination to work extremely hard, and of course, a little bit of luck goes a really long way. But the mindset is where it all begins. Don't let anybody else's judgment stop you achieving what you want to achieve. Challenge yourself every morning to apply what I've been talking about today. Start with the small things and let them manifest into something far greater. See where it will take you. See what opportunities arise from implementing this mindset on a daily basis. We all need to take the opportunities that come our way as you never know where those opportunities might take us. We need to follow our passions, otherwise we will regret it. Don't be afraid to fail. Be afraid not to try.